Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well, and welcome to the first episode in hopefully what will be a series where I take some uh, very popular songs, either in like math rock or emo, uh, but I'm open to doing other genres too, and I'm going to break them down and hopefully we can see um, what makes them great. I got the idea for this series from the wonderful uh, Rick Beato. If you haven't checked out his channel already, um, it's a very good resource for uh, songwriting and also like just really interesting uh, topics. But um, Rick on his channel there, he's uh, doing very uh, popular songs. So he's not really covering um, math rock songs or basically um, emo songs. So uh, hopefully I can fulfill that vein. And hopefully he won't mind for um, if he ever stumbles across this video. So if you're listening, Rick, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's such a good idea that I thought I'd try and uh, have a go at it myself. And what I want to know from you is um, if you enjoy this, then... Uh, please let me know and also what songs you would like me to do next also which is a very important topic and um, I'm open to any suggestions so uh, leave them down below in the comments thank you so for the first episode I'm gonna break down the song FC Premix by the band The Fall of Troy and we're gonna have a look at what particularly makes this song so great I guess a great deal of you heard the song it's a very uh, popular song it's from the album Doppelganger which was released in 2005 which is a fantastic album uh, it's not my favourite, my favourite is actually Manipulator, but um, this song's got a, really, a lot of strong uh, tracks on it, right? Standout tracks, that's for sure. And it featured Tim Ward on bass and doing backing vocals, Thomas Eric on guitar and vocals, and we had Andrew Forsman on uh, drums. So at the start of the song we got this awesome sounding riff with a load of delay on it. And then it doubles, left and right, so we've got stereo. And then the uh, whole band kicks in there. So um, that riff on its own, if I... Uh... So that riff about, you know, any delay on... Uh, which is what we hear later on. Um, it's such an awesome sounding riff, and the fact that I did the delay on there at the intro makes it sound really thick and really powerful, right? But what makes this riff um, really stick together and work very well is the way it's been a voice led. So when we take a look, closer look at the notes that have actually been used, so um, this song is in the key of uh, A minor by the way, and we're going to refer to it in the key of C major because this makes things easier as you'll see as we go along. So this first chord, A minor 7 outlines, so A, C and a G, and then that goes to a an F major 7 outline, so F, A and E, and then an E, G and a D, E minor 7, D, F and C, uh, a D minor 7. So from the first chord here, the, this uh, G jumps to um, an F, so basically if you take the octave down, you just get that um, D7 there. And then the next chord comes back to the F, and then it descends to the E, so you've got so far, right, so that sounds quite smooth. So we've got, and then the last chord here, uh, it goes to the D minor 7, so, so that's why this riff, um, you know, sounds very smooth and it's, um, you know, very pleasing to listen to, because it's, it's voice led ever so well, the descend is. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but it sounds cool, right? So this basically outlines the chord progression, you know, your ears relating to. So an A minor, which is the sixth, F major, which is the fourth, E minor, which is the third, and D, which is the second. And then back to the um, A minor again there. So after this, the uh, whole band kicks in, right? So the guitar here is, um, you know, let off the rails, if you sing it, you can hear it there. Two guitars, you know, pan left and right. So the, um, yeah, the riff's not got the delay on it, but now it's like, you know, nice and distorted, very thick sound. And if we listen to the uh, bass and drums, listen to how well they're, um, you know, like, interacting with each other. So the kick is no 
is emphasizing, well, the bass, I guess, is emphasizing some of the kick, right? And especially later on when it comes to the uh, la latter part of the, the verse. Um, the, the vocal track is on the drum track on this separation I got, so unfortunately I can't take the vocals out there, but just listen to how the, uh, the kick and the bass go dun 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 in this bit. compared to earlier. So this is good because it, you know, is signaling that, um, you know, the chorus is coming up right. This is essentially the pre-chorus. And if we listen to the vocal, can you hear that slap back delay on the vocals, right? So that makes it sound nice and thick. And when it's isolated like that, like I said, it's um, in the drum track, so it hasn't really, I can't really just isolate it on its own. Uh, this, this is all I could find, unfortunately. But um, that slap back, you can't, it, it's, it's a lot when it's on its own, right? But when it's in with the mix. I'll bring that up a bit. You know, it's not so obvious there, right? So it fits in with the mix really well, so that's awesome. Uh, and then let's take a listen to the chorus. So there's a, there's a lot going on there, right? So let's break it down a bit and let's see what's going on. So the bass here is uh, driving the, the harmony of the chorus. It's much more just um, you know, pasty, paste in this section. It seems um, a little bit sloppy, but I guess it's uh, in time when we listen to the whole mix, but that's um, driving the harmony. And also, on the drum track here, uh, I, I have, I don't know if you heard this before. Can you hear that really like phased guitar sound, right? So that's also like, it's quite subtle, um, I guess, in the mix, you know, when you listen to everything together. I mean, it's there, right? But basically, um, what this guitar is doing here is um, it's driving the harmony along, for, you know, you're here, you're, you're here, you're here to, you know, relate to like what the uh, harmony, the chord progression basically is in the chorus. And uh, what I've worked this out to be is basically it's A minor, which is the sixth and C major. And it goes C major, which is the first, and then it goes to F major, and then it goes back to C the first, and then and then D minor, and then the uh, cycle comes back again. So that gives us a six one four one two progression, but that two is kind of just a passing to get back to the um, original chord there. So we got a six one four one progression. And these are chords that are used a lot, you know, in pop music to write uh, very uh, famous songs um, in, indeed. So we can see why this chorus is, um, you know, so uh, catchy to listen to, right? That it has this catchy chord progression behind it, you know, um, essentially. So it's, it's very you know minor sound to it, right? But it, it doesn't really sound like that when you listen to the track, right? It's so been you know very clever with it, and, and part of that reason is because of this this guitar here. So that yeah, you know, uh, delay is back again, right? And uh, what's that? Um, I can't get this delay you know, exactly right. I'm using the analog one, so I'm like trying to work out like you know what the uh, speed of the delay is. But I, I've got it close, I think. But 
Um, so basically what this um, is uh, doing here, let me just grab my notes on this one quickly. Um, these notes, uh, which is a cool thing to do, uh, is, if, as you can hear that, you know, so uh, we have this A major chord, A minor, sorry, and then that riff over the top, and when we change the C, so the, the lead part uh, in the chorus is, is changing along with the chords you see. And when you take a look at the notes like I did, like what have actually been used in here, uh, much like the intro with these chords, uh, so here we got an A, a G, and an E. So the one, seven, and the five. Uh, so the first, the seventh, and the fifth of a A, a minor chord. So that's outlining a A minor 7 chord, so that fits really nicely with the A minor, right? Using the strong notes in an A minor chord along with an, uh, an A minor chord in the harmony underneath, so that's cool. And then we jump to the C, and then got a B, a C, and a G, so 7, 1, 5. So that 1 and the 5, again, are strong notes to highlight in the C major chord, right? And then um, we go to the F major. So we've got um, an E, an E, F, G, and a C. So a 7, 1, 2, 5 of um, an F major chord. I'll have some stuff on the screen to, you know, hopefully be able to clarify um, exactly what I'm talking about. So again here, the, the, the uh, 1, 1, and the uh, 5. These are strong notes in that F major chord, and then because we're using this uh, seventh again, it gives us that feeling of um, you know an E minor chord, right? An E minor seven arpeggio, and then lastly um, we come back to the C here, and then so we got an E and F and a C. Again, so the C, you know, it's obviously a strong note to use, right, over a C major chord. And then again, the third here, the E. Uh, again, another strong note to use there. And then over the D minor, um, got F, G, and a D. The D itself, so. Which is obviously going to be another strong note to work there. So that's why it sounds really good, right? They work very well together. So if you have the bass, let's use the bass as our harmony here with the guitar. So listen how the leads following the harmony, right? It's, it's a really simple idea, but like using all these effects and stuff really thickens up the sound and changes it and that makes it, you know, not so obvious that there's a, you know, like a really poppy kind of chord progression going underneath. So that sounds really cool. And then the vocals in the chorus so there we have a harmony. Um, I'll bring that back in now. And it's um, um, an octave harmony. You got that lower one there. And then we have like a call response. And that's really, really good. Like, you know, listen how the bass and that shouting line all emphasize, you know, with the, with the kick. And then you have that, you know, that harmony, you know, in between it. So you got three different types of vocals going on. You got harmony, like a call, you got the response, and then you got the, you know, the shouting heated vocals, and then, you know, a response again with a harmony. So it's really, um, you know, it's such a cool idea you know, for the chorus and melody line there. So I like that. And, you know, that's certainly what's making that great, right? And then um, we suddenly then... I'll just get where I am, my bearings. Um, back to the... Back to the repeat of the intro. And then into the verse. More of the same, but like... With those little, uh, you know, gaps. We've got different guitar parts, like for example... It got, that guitar harmony there, which sounds really cool. Then you're back to another chorus, more of the same. But then, when we come out the chorus, 
back to that really, you know, delayed guitar again. Right? That delay sounds so much better than the analog that I got. Uh, so this bridge I've separated into two sections. So the first section is obviously this one, before we get to the uh, diminished part. The guitar's doing, um, yeah, it's got a lot of delay on it, but... It's not so difficult. I think the bass player is, um... It's got the work cut out from there, that's it. So the guitar and the, the bass there are really, you know, working together um, with each other. And the drums too. With the again, you know, the kick and the bass working really, really solidly there together. And um, let's see. And then the guitar goes off more on a tangent. And then we have this change, you know, in the direction in the the section. And then the bass and the guitar here actually are uh, playing similar thing. This now. So that, you know, makes a change to the previous section. Uh, so the idea is evolving, which, you know, makes it sound really cool. And then you suddenly hit with this um, you know, very dissonant section. So this is the, uh, the second part of the uh, interlude section. Well, I, how I see it anyway. So you got the bass playing this whilst the um, the guitar and the drums are building up, right? And as they go along, bring the bass back in. And it's building to the super heavy part. And what what I thought was really cool when I was analyzing this bit, there's so much going on I never knew about, which is cool. So if you first let's start off with the uh, the bass, but if you listen here, like um so before the bass it it becomes quite compressed. Uh, so So kicks on this really grimy fuzz, fuzz uh, pedal, I guess, at this point. But you know, it, it compresses the sound a lot. But it's, it's very dirty, right? Very nasty. <laughs> and then if you listen to the the guitar, so it's got this phasery thing going on. But it's also got like um, you know, like a harmonizer pedal, right? But the lower octave kind of thing going on. So it sounds especially nasty, right? Very tense with the bass. And then, um, I was gonna say, yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, um, oh, I forgot to say as well, um, I was gonna talk about that phaser effect on the snare roll, which really adds to the snare roll, right? So that sounds cool. Before before this section kicks in, and then um, later on here, that lower uh, octave from the guitar becomes a separate track. In this case, it's on the drum track, whilst the guitar does you know this. an octave higher. So again, it's got all that, that phasery stuff going on, right? And then that lower, lower uh, sub-octave is uh, still going on underneath, right? Which sounds pretty cool. And then we're, you know, back into the final chorus. So we're going from that nasty dissonant, you know, 
heavy part and then we're going back into this nice uh, lush kind of chorus sound, right? And uh, interestingly here, the, um, you know, the shouts have, have gone, you know, usually they're here, right? I wonder why they decided to leave it out. Maybe they just didn't put it into the track or they wanted to signify that this is the last chorus or something. Or have it more pleasant sounding. <laughs> I don't I really don't know. And then the finale here. So you have this like lead guitar to like just really like bring it back home that this is you know the end of the song just before we kick into the last section and also um interestingly if you listen to the uh, vocal at the end here I, mean, I wish i could separate that but i can't so it goes um <laughs> like a, the echo is like a modulates like an octave down my watches and then back up again now we're back into the uh, repetition of the intro right but what's different here is that the guitar and the bass play the same thing yeah so that kind of signals that that's the end of the song so, um, so what makes that song awesome? So hopefully I did it some justice so you can see uh, what's going on there exactly. Um, it was good fun for me to go through this. It's one of my uh, you know, favorite For the Troy songs. And it was definitely, you know, there's a reason why it was one of their most famous songs. Because it's got like a lot of pop structure to it in the, um, in the chorus as we saw there. And everything, you know, fits together quite nicely and everything's working in tangent and harmonizes very nicely. It's, you know, melodically sound song let's say um so i want to say uh thank you for watching um hopefully this video will be able to um not get pulled down because i'm using the fall of troy's music but what usually happens in this case is the uh record label whoever is um owning that material will let it stay online but they will run their um you know monetize it with their ads so if you do see ads on this video it's um not going to me it'll be going to um, the, the company there so I uh, don't get mad at me if you see advertisements I'm not making money off them okay <laughs> if you do want to support me then you know you, you can get some merchandise and yeah I got a bunch of other things like patron and stuff you can find in the description but um what I want to know from you is um let me know if you enjoyed this and um, let me know if you want to see more of this more importantly because I, I don't want to be just doing this if no one's actually really uh, enjoying it and um, lastly um, what other songs would you like to see me uh, touch upon bear in mind I want to try and be able to get the separation of the tracks right get the guitar vocals and drums or whatever's on the track separated uh, this is the best I could get on this and apparently a lot of this is from um, Guitar Hero apparently you can separate the tracks um, on that but this is the best I could get so if not, I, I can try and, you know, do a, do a song where everything's still together. But it's nice to be able to separate it so we can hear what's going on exactly. Uh, as always, um, you know, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.